Hello, and Hey, why do you always get to say hello at the beginning? Why can't I do it? Hello. Well, because I do it better. Mrs. Littlejohn writes to us from Perth to say, your programmes, what a load of rubbish. If I knew who gets all the thousands for producing them, well, I'd better not say I'd wring his neck. Horse racing on two programmes has caused many a broken home, so do you mind if I ask, is it especially for the royals? Please get these disgusting wrestlers off the screen. They are disgusting. Meanwhile, Big Daddy Duncan of Fechney Bray House in Blackburn throws his hat into the ring with Bring Back Old Star Wrestling. One hour of wrestling will do. And speaking of finely honed lean figures in swimsuits, Baywatch is a hot favourite with Andrew McDonald of North Anderson Drive in Aberdeen. I was dying for the new series, only to discover it was a repeat, he says. Well, Andrew, I went to great lengths to find out when the new series begins. I phoned various organisations, including London Weekend Television, who import the programme from the States, only to be told that they'd be in breach of copyright if they were to divulge such information. But between you and me, Andrew, I can tell you, new series October the 12th, mate. That'll please Mrs Shand of Early Gardens Banff. She says, everyone I know or speak to have mentioned how television programmes are nearly all repeats and how sickening it is as we're getting them ad infinitum. Well, Irene, I wonder if you're watching us now or again. Are you watching us on Saturday or on Wednesday when this week's programme's being repeated? You'd like to see us twice, wouldn't you? And speaking of double vision, an Inverness viewer who chooses to remain anonymous writes to say, thank you for the opportunity for viewers to write in with their views on television. A very good idea, but why two presenters? <laughs> oh, I see. Okay, if you um, want that. Is it jobs for the boys? Ah, well, um, the show must go on, and uh, I have here a letter from Pauline Marshall in Inver by Tane, who incidentally runs a helpline for Beauty and the Beast fans. Does anybody actually watch that stuff? First the Trekkies, then Brookies. Well, you call yourselves Beasties, by chance? She says, your new programme, put it in writing. We watch every week, but I have to say on a personal view that the programme itself is a great idea, but I'm sorry, the front men, persons, don't do it justice. I've spoken to a couple of people about this, and I'm afraid their views were the same as mine. I know there are probably more people out there that don't agree. That's fine. But I have to say that Robin Galloway is not that popular. Too gushing, my daughter thinks. Uh, Mariah, hold on. I'm coming with you, I think. Uh, let's go somewhere we'll be really appreciated. The BBC, for instance. It's only half a mile up the road to the Beech Grove Garden, and as this is the last recording day in their present series, we decided to drop in, but I didn't expect to find this fellow with a hoe. This couldn't possibly be Bill Torrance doing some work. The very same. Good yes. Lord. <laughs> Mop the sweat from your brow. <laughs> Robin Galloway, put it in writing. I'm here today to, to answer a, a viewer's query who wrote to us. And they weren't really having a go at you, Bill, mate. But, but <laughs> come on. They'd like to know about your involvement in the programme because uh, Bill Torrance, before he joined the Beach Grove Garden, wasn't really famed for gardening. No, uh, but I was keen on gardening. And in fact, with a local radio station down in, in Edinburgh, Radio Forth, I had hosted uh, a gardening programme for four years. So there was an interest. I had in a wee bit of it professionally, but just a keen amateur. and. Seemingly, that's what they wanted. They wanted somebody to put delay questions, if you like, uh, where if you just had two gardeners talking about plants, they can sometimes talk in Latin words and, and uh, assume that everybody knows what they're talking about. But I asked the kind of layman's questions, such as, how do you know what's the top and the bottom of a bulb? Do you put greenhouse shading in the inside or the outside? And I still make the mistakes, you know. Do you still do your own garden? Yes, I do. I don't have a gardener. And I've got a big garden. Yeah. Do you do homers? <laughs> do homers. I might looking for help, Robin. I could get you a spade. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll give you my address. I was, I was hoping you'd come around my place. This is a lovely garden, but it's not exactly normal, is it? It's a television garden. How is it specially designed? Well, we have to cope with three cameras, you know, when we record the programme, and therefore there's a lot of concrete paths all the way around the garden, and they're about sort of three to four foot, foot in width. And we need that because it's got to be smooth for the cameras. Also, things like the fences. We, we can actually remove this so that the cameras can get right in and uh, get a shot of the garden. Unfortunately, but the then they can go on the uh, flower beds. 
Well, that's one of the problems, and I must admit, very often I'm sort of thinking, oh, careful you don't stand on the plants. I mean, on our open day, we have as many as about 5,000 people around. In this tiny garden? In this tiny garden, and yeah. what we do is we have a one-way system, uh -huh. and they come right the way around and come to speak to Bill and myself and the other experts uh -huh. on the programme. Uh -huh. And they're pleased with what they see, obviously. Well, they seem to love it. I think they're surprised at how small it is, because I think the camera tends to exaggerate everything. Uh -huh. And, of course, they never see that tower either on the programme. It's great big mark. Nick Ibbotson, you are programme producer. Tell me about some of the changes in the Beach Grove Garden over the last couple of years. Well, it was two years ago I took over, and there was the major change then that we redeveloped the whole garden, and there was a change of presenters. That was the big change. Since then, we've tried to keep it as steady as we can, because audiences don't really like change. Do some people think it's a bit too radical now? I think people are now used to it, and I think if we change it again, people would complain. But you, you, you've mucked the views about a little bit, haven't you? Because it used to be on on a Friday, and it's now changed. Why, why is that? Well, there are two main reasons, really, that we changed. Firstly, the, the Friday slot, there were various sporting events in the middle of the season that would have moved us around, and a moving slot, I think, is very disturbing to audiences, moving time. And the other thing was that we looked at the schedules on a Friday of the other channels, and there were a number of gardening programmes on. And it was felt, well, wouldn't it be nice to move it to a different day of the week uh, and have a regular slot um, when, when people can, and maybe more people were in early in the week than are in on a Friday, which go, well, this is very sociable, so they tend to be out on a Friday. Oh, you know, Mariah, we've come a long way. We certainly have, and I've felt every bump. How many miles? Oh, just the one. And here he is, Miles Galloway, born Wednesday the 25th of September 1991 at breakfast time, a real sweetie. And it's happy birthday, too, to Grampy and Television, 30 years old this week. Yes! And to celebrate, there are lots of new programmes, live debates on We the Jury, and to please all those of you who are still writing in to ask for Scottish music, Sing Something Scottish. And there's Grampian's Big Birthday Bonanza programme, 30 Glorious Years. Which is bad news for boxing fans, as at the same time, the rest of the country will be watching Lennox Lewis fight Glenn McCrory. Ah, but they're bound to repeat it on Grampian. Hmm. And I've got a letter here from John McLeod of Inverness, who says, May I wish everybody at Grampian Television a very happy birthday in this their 30th year of top quality broadcasting to North and North East Scotland. Here's to the next 30 years. Thank, Thank you, you, John. John. Call it sexy fun or sexist foolishness, Controversial Studs is turning on American TV fans. Studs? Yes, it's a game show. Two men separately blind date the same three women. Later in the TV studio, the women recall their romantic interludes with as much sexual innuendo as possible. And the men have to guess which one of them the women is talking about. Well, that puts blind date in the shadow. In fact, it's looking pretty dim these days. A hundred episodes old this week and ratings are falling fast. Has it become bland date, we wonder? That's very good for you, Mariah. Oh, thank you, Robert. A recent study published by Oxford University has discovered that those who watch only soaps are happier people than those who watch the whole range of television. And the local Brookside lobby. What, the Brookies? Yes, they're up in arms because last week I told you what was going to happen to Sue Sullivan. Naughty girl. But it wasn't my fault. Channel 4's lips were sealed. But Mersey Television, who make Brookside, well, they were absolutely desperate to kiss and tell. I wonder why. <laughs> Mrs. Davidson writes to us from Banff. I wonder why it is thought necessary to screen clips of forthcoming episodes. These clips are often the most vital part of the next episode and therefore take the edge off the interest of the next part of the story. If this practice were discontinued, it would save me from having to close my eyes and put my fingers in my ears every time they come on. It's Frank Tate's big day, but Jack Sugden's determined to have the last word. Little, you know damn well what's up. Sorry? Muck spreading. Why the field next to our land, and why today? I'm a farmer. What I do? It's flaming sour grapes. No, it's cowmock, actually. Mind you, a bit of a stink, that, isn't it? Eh? Not exactly what the holidaymakers will be wanting. Just a bit of honest country manure, Charlie. Tuesday and Thursday at 7. It's all right, Robin and Mrs. Davidson. You can come out now. It's all over. Oh, phew. Anyway, you didn't miss anything. It's an old episode, ah. and I never tell secrets. Mandy Burney of Peterhead wants to know, when is Zorro and Airwolf coming back? Because we like them. And the answer is, they're not. Well, not for a while, anyway. And Nicola Fraser from Aberdeen thinks, it's very unfair that 
on English holidays, they have cartoons on TV. When it comes to the Scottish holidays, we get left out. Well, it's an unfair world, Nicola, with an H. In fact, it's a scheduler's nightmare. In Scotland alone, the variations in term times in different schools means it's impossible to keep everybody happy. And it's an unfair world for Craig Davidson, too. He writes from Montrose to say, it's not fair, because all the things I want to see is always on late at night, like lots of dramas. Well, don't worry, Craig, they'll probably be repeated when you're older. Uh, probably several times. And I'll just repeat for you the address so that you can keep on writing to us with all your views on television. It's Put It In Writing, Grampian Television, Queen's Cross, Aberdeen, AB9, 2XJ. And finally, oh, sorry, can we have that again, please? Yeah. Jackie Mackay, she writes from Dundee, she spotted the stamp. She says she's an eagle-eyed viewer and it's out of date. Well, thank you very much, Jackie. How observant. Actually, Jackie, if you look even more carefully, you'll see it's not a 22p stamp, as you said, or even a 24p stamp. It's a first-class stamp with no price on it, which the post office told us is valid through all price changes. Our boys were very careful to check that this so that we just wouldn't get letters like yours. Well done, boys. And well, that's it. See you next week. Bye. Go on. Your garden or mine. I've got a window box. Oh!